<laughs> what up? It's Lip Service. I'm Angela Yee. I'm Gigi McGuire. I'm Jordi Manuel. And I'm Yada. <laughs> <laughs> yada, yada, yada. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, first of all, thank you for joining us today, Yada. I know you flew in just to do lip service with Definitely. us. And we've seen you go viral quite a few times yes. on social media. And you have a very interesting story. So there's a lot of things that we want to clear up. There's a lot of advice that we okay. want to hear um, from you, you know. So first of all, uh, Gigi, good yes, to see you. How was BET Awards? How was Essence? Oh my God, you was outside. I have been non stop planes trains automobiles <laughs> crazy like i don't even know how i'm surviving um essence was let's start with essence because that's okay. like from last night i literally just got on a plane from uh new orleans at 6 a.m landed in atlanta 8 a.m and then was back on another plane to here in new york at uh 2 p.m wow. so i'm like <laughs> moving 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 um essence was amazing so as many times as i've been this was my first time actually working mm -hmm. so i was pressed on behalf of the show yes and i did the convention center i did the concerts i did the after parties the fillmore saw a lot of familiar faces and got shown a lot of love and i hear it in your I voice love, you hear me right. i love new orleans <laughs> just in general like i drive to new orleans from atlanta just to eat so right. you know just like all of the energy and just you know, all of the love that was shown, it was a really, really, really good time. Good. Well deserved. Yeah. We love it. Thank you for working. Yeah. You okay? By the way. Footage on the way. <laughs> and then um, prior to that, I did, uh, well, I was in LA for BET Weekend on behalf of Taylorport. Mm -hmm. And um, I did my first official event with them. Okay. So that was pretty busy. cool. <laughs> um, I also did some Taylorport stuff in um, New Orleans. Okay. Um, so we shaking and moving and moving and shaking. And, you all know, this, I love it. Positive <laughs> things happening. And we're going to talk about positivity. But yes. Jordan, what about you these past few weeks? Last time, you, last time you were here, we didn't even know this, but the um, the Summer House, Martha's Vineyard is no longer. Right, right. right. It's okay. paused. It's mm -hmm. paused. Um, I'm still living my life, though. Mm -hmm. Of course. I went to France, the south I of France. I saw that. I was um, um, yeah, so I was on planes, on boats, and automobiles, Child, too. Yeah, there wasn't no boats on my trips. Today. You have the boats. <laughs> um, and then I came back, went to D.C. for the National um, Alopecia foundation organization mm -hmm. um so that was really great and then i came back to the hamptons did an event for she djs yes oh, okay. did an event, okay, then came okay. back and it's just been non-stop too so I also am losing my voice. I just... love the book and booked and busy. <laughs> and, then, and look, and now we have Yada here. And, you know, I know you talk a lot about like positivity, right. manifesting the things right. that you right. want in right. life and right. how your life can change when you put some positivity out there. <laughs> so let's talk about you and your background for people who are listening. They've seen you on social media. Mm. They've seen some viral clips. And let's talk about who Yada is because you've had a really... Um, I would say that your background has prepared you for where you are today. Mm. And sometimes it's easier to listen to somebody when they've been through when they've been through it mm. and come out on the other side. Mm. You know, so let's talk about kind of um where you got started cuz your life was not always easy. No, it wasn't. No, 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 no. I was raised by a beautiful a beautiful woman, single parent that busted her butt to make sure her children were good. We were some bad boys. We were horrible. Okay. We were horrible How many children. boys was it? Two. Just two of you, okay. Yeah. Two terrible, no. <laughs> Definitely terrible. Bad ass and are kids. you the older or the younger? I'm the middle. I'm the middle. So it's it's two. I have two brothers. I'm the middle one. So it's three of us. Okay. Okay. Three okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was raised in California, moved around. My mother remarried to a military guy, and that that was what it was. Um, and then I started traveling, mm -hmm. got into medicine. And then I went to Africa, opened up a hospital. What part of Africa? Senegal, people... West Africa. Okay, wow. Yeah, opened up an Africa. Got I mean, opened up a um, hospital. Got into trucking, and it's just been Mercy Road. I don't know how somebody just is like, I'm gonna just go to to West Africa and open up. Like, right. how does that even happen? No, nah, I went there for fun. I, okay. I went. I went there for fun. <laughs> And then I seen a lot of opportunities to make some money. Mm -hmm. So you took yeah. advantage of that. Of course. Built yourself an empire. Had to. Mm -hmm. Got yourself a wife over there and everything. I got a wife. <laughs> <laughs> now, you got to get, because some of those viral clips, you know, just to examine that a little something, something, um, you know, uh, the 50-50 right. versus the man taking care of the bills. Not just taking care of it, but paying your wife $250,000 right. a year. Right. That was something that went viral and was very controversial. Mm. Um, and I saw the conversations that you've had surrounding that. And it feels like when I see a lot of these podcasts, a lot of men don't like the fact that, um, you know, women have it. Some women have an issue with, with um, 
going 50-50. They're like, the man should be able to hold it down, take care of the household. Before we talk about it, what do you think about 50-50 versus the hmm. man handling the bills? I personally think that it should be based on your personal situation, mm -hmm. financial situation. Um, you know, there's levels to life. And if you are on a level where you're grinding and you're figuring it out and we're better and stronger in numbers, then yeah, let's hold each other down until we get to where we need to be. Would you be okay with being the main provider? If Me personally, at the state that I'm in right now, no. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely not. Jordan's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no. I'm I, holding it down I, I for myself. I more than me. Mm -hmm. Like, I know I work hard. I can take care of myself. God forbid anything happen. But you need to be working harder than me. Okay, working harder than you. Working harder than me and playing harder and making more. Period. Okay. All right, now talk, talk to us about your thoughts on this. My thoughts is if a man has to... If a man gets into a relationship with a woman, he should provide her every need. Now, if I'm grinding, I don't need a woman. I should be focused on taking care of myself. And when I get to that level, now I can bring you into my world. Because you can't respect me if you're taking care of me. You can't respect me if you're going <laughs> half on my bills. Mm -hmm. And this is what happened. A lot of men don't date to bring a woman into the world to uplift them. They're dating for financial assistance. And this is why men want to go 50-50. Because -50, they wow. need a woman to help them take care of them. Let me ask you this. So how do you know a woman doesn't want you just for your money or for your... I want a woman to want me for my money. Mm -hmm. I'm a provider. <laughs> want me to provide. That's why I want you. Why, why are you choosing me? You want an alpha man. I'm going to show you my alpha man. I'm here to take care of your every needs. And that's not just financially. That's mentally. That's emotionally. That's spiritually. Because I'm here to lead in every aspect of my life because I know what you're going to bring to me. When I put you in an environment of peace, when I put you in an environment where you feel secure, you're going to elevate. And when a woman elevates, good women are going to elevate the men right next Absolutely. to them. So you become my diamond in the rough. How do you know who's a good woman and who's not, though? I don't worry about that. I'm a good man. I don't care if you're if you're tarnished. I'm going to perfect you. you if up, I'm baby. a good man, this is what's going to happen. <laughs> I love this. It, like, oh, like, I'm whatever. here for it. <laughs> I need this recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is recorded. And my morning mantras. <laughs> I need to cut <laughs> We need to pray, play these as morning affirmations from today <laughs> right. on, right? <laughs> Uh, but so this is an interesting conversation because mm -hmm. I saw a lot of people pushing back on this. Of course. And um, even for myself, like I know that I always do tend to bring a lot to the table. Like I'm used to handling things for myself. Right. Like I own, you know, my home and other homes right. and I make a pretty good salary at right. what I do. And so for me, money, a man like providing for me has never been my top priority as far as financial mm -hmm. status. So mm -hmm. I've never been like, I need somebody to like pay for all my stuff. I need this or I'm not okay with it. So no. I want to chime in and say mm -hmm. that I um, had that relationship where a man took care of my every need mm -hmm. and I was put up and didn't have to worry about anything, you know, financially or anything like that. Um, the thorn in my side mm -hmm. in that situation was that um, I had given up so much control of myself mm -hmm. that when he snatched everything from me, I was left rebuilding myself. See, that's the problem. And that's why I pay my woman 250000 a year. So if anything happens, she feels disrespected. I've done something out of the character that she doesn't approve of. She has a safety net. Mm -hmm. And that 250000 doesn't go to nothing but her in a bank account that I have no access to. Mm -hmm. Real men want to see you succeed. Now you have men with money that want to control you. Yeah. So you believe in keeping your assets like having she has a bank account that you have no access to. Does that mean you have that as well? No. Mm -hmm. My money is her money and her money is her money. My money is her money yeah. and her money is her money. She yeah. has access to all my bank accounts. Yeah, see, my situation wasn't like that. Now, <laughs> when we broke up, there was like a severance package for me to restart. Right? Okay, okay, he okay. did help me out there. Okay. Um, but, but yeah, it would be like whenever we would go through it and, and you know, he was feeling like he wanted to take that Amex uh, balance to zero, mm. I would go swipe that card and it would get declined. Mm. So, you know, it was like he held the money over my head and that, that became a problem. Because that's me. men that only know how to lead with money. Mm. If a man can lead you in every aspect of your life, he's not going to pull money in and pull money out. You're not playing double dutch with the money. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and let's be honest, though, things do happen in life. Like one of the main reasons that people end up going bankrupt could be uh, bad investments, but also medical mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. things can happen. Mm-hmm. So there are emergencies mm-hmm. in life that do go down. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, in a situation like that, let's mm-hmm. just say something unexpected happens mm-hmm. and, you know, things people will be like, oh, I didn't have insurance. Right. I didn't realize For I needed sure. this. Yeah. Some things aren't covered by insurance. And at that point now, when something is an emergency, then, you know. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Mm-hmm. I'm properly prepared. I'm a man. I have to prepare for that rainy day. Any, Like you said, anything can happen. Mm-hmm. That's where that 10 million is tucked over there for a rainy day. Okay. All right. 10 million tucked for a yeah, rainy day. Like <laughs> I like the way that sounds. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's also people who doubt you, right, on social media, of course, because I've seen the like, he's a scammer. He's right. this, he's that. We don't believe him. He doesn't really pay her that. Right. Look at Gigi's face. Because right. I hate the internet and people right. with their opinions and they're always like projecting their, their shit onto what they see in other people. Right. And, you know, that just becomes a problem for me. Just, I try like not even to really let it be a problem, but it's just like y'all so ignorant and just well, how so do you how do you negative. rebut that? My woman's glow. Mm-hmm. My woman glows. What's understanding? A got woman to be can't saying. fake a glow. A woman can't fake happiness. When a woman's happy, you can tell from her eyes to her skin to everything. My woman is my crown. All I do is show her. Now you also have two wives, right? Is of course, that correct? Okay. Of course, of so course. one wife is here in America. The yes. other one is in West Africa. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. So both of them are glowing. Of course. <laughs> These are my <laughs> now, think. now, now. I have to, I have to, I have to put this out there because a lot of men believe that, you know, they good women for sexual things. It's it's not that. Mine is based completely on business. My woman in West Africa. She runs a whole trucking company. She lives in a mansion. She's t- she's properly taken care of, and I also support her whole family. Mm-hmm. My wife here runs the company here. They're bosses. They she runs the company. She's in charge of the company here. I take care of her whole family. I make things happen. So it's not me. Oh. I'm just a sexually craved man and I'm just going out here going crazy. No, I take care of my family. But you do, you are sexually attracted to both women. They're beautiful women. Beautiful women. Okay, yeah. No, I've seen them on. I just want to double check that because when you say it's business. Of course, of I course. Wanna, I'm just making sure that th- that's part of the equation too. Of course. Of course. I, have, I have beautiful women, but it's, it's not the base of it. Like, I didn't choose them for sex. I'm a businessman. I chose for business. And that's why they know if anything ever happens, they have a cushion where they can be properly taken care of. All right. How do you split up the time? I want to I I just that. jump into the tea. Yeah. Like, how do you split in the time? Is it six months Jordan each? was like, like, I'll take that salary. Right. <laughs> I mean. Yes. So, <laughs> so I'm over here half the year. I'm over here half the year. But the beautiful part about it is that my first wife chose the second wife. So it wasn't me saying, I want you. Mm. She was like, nah, she cool. And mm. she's intelligent. Like she just graduated from college. Right. She was like, oh, she, she's it. So I said, come on, let me let me see. And she, she's shining. They both shining, but she's shining. Yeah. So they hang out with each other and everything. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that- it's real like sister wives situation. It's, it's their sisters. Yes. They, they'll be cool even if I wasn't even in the picture. Mm-hmm. You know? But when y'all are all in the same house, do you all sleep in the same no, room? No, 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 no. I'm not. No, nah, no. Nah, nah. They have they have different bedrooms. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, they so have. All they, y'all have different bedrooms. No, they or? have different bedrooms. You know, and okay. when they feel like they need my presence, they bless me. I don't okay. bless them. They bless and are you loyal to both of them, or are you still able to say step outside? Would you look for a third wife? No, I have I have two wives. Mm-hmm. I'm committed to two women. That doesn't mean I flirt with women or I try to pull other women into the scenario. No. My women, if they say we need somebody else because the company's expanding, they choose. I don't choose. And that's for business purposes. The company's expanding. So you couldn't okay. be with a woman who was like, I don't want to be in this business. Now, like if that. a woman comes and says, look, I just want to take care of the children. I just want to be a babysitter to the children. Okay, cool. If the women agreed upon that, mm-hmm. they, they add on. I don't add on. Okay, so... How many children do you have? I have five beautiful children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. And some of them live in, like, tell me the breakdown of it. Which ones live in? So my my wife, my wife in Africa just had a daughter. Mm -hmm. And then my wife here just had a son. But they're all our children. Okay. All right. Wow. This is, um, I love this. (laughs) So before I was born, my mother, um, with my (laughs) three older sisters, with their father, Mm -hmm. my mother lived in a house with their three children and his other 
um, woman and awesome. her children. Wow. And like, I wasn't here yet, so I wasn't a part of it, but I heard a lot of stories about it um, through like through my family. Me mm. and my mother never talked about it, um, mm. and she's no longer here, so I okay. can't get any input on it. But um, I always found it interesting um, that they were able to co-inhabitat. And then moving forward, when I did come into the world, my father was married. Um, to of course not my mother so mm. i was a side baby essentially mm. and um my mother and his wife um got along very well mm. yeah like even up until my mother passed away mm. um him her and uh my father's wife they were cool they, they were like very close See, like, you know a lot of men are doing what i'm doing they're mm -hmm. just secretive about it yes the women don't know about it that part mm. okay so That's you're saying a lot happening. of men are having you know, I mean, they're not doing it on the scale right. that he's doing it on, but right. they are having li lives and wives Second in separate place. areas Definitely. and, and yeah. mm -hmm. holding it all down. And Definitely. The women just don't know about it. You think that women would be okay do. if they knew? In this era, with the low quality of men, <laughs> women are saying yes. He said it. I didn't say that. With the low quality of men, <laughs> women are saying yes. <laughs> what about if it was the other way around? Let's just say it was a woman and she had a husband. husband. Yeah. And that happens. There's a TV show. What, what are your thoughts about that? I don't, I don't, honestly, I don't. Women, you guys are different. Like women, your loyalty is different. Your love is different. Like you're superior when it comes to that. Besides, the men, men are not like that. We're not built like you guys are built. When you love, you love with all of you. When a woman is happy, she doesn't see another man. So, mm -hmm. but you're saying that men can be happy but see other women, no, 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 and no, men no, don't no, have no, the same no, level no, of loyalty no, no, no. as women. We can't. We can't. We can't do that. <laughs> what, what I'm what I'm saying is when when a woman when a woman is truly in love completely mm -hmm. you love with all of you mind body and soul so if a man walked in here regardless of how handsome he was how much money he had you don't see him all you see is the man you're in love with mm -hmm. men we can be in love with you love everything about you and still see women when they walk into the room and do. Mm -hmm. And will uh, and did. <laughs> I don't know that every man is like that. Not, I would, not I would all. like to believe, but there's a lot. I think it becomes a decision. Like they, they're more actively choosing to act upon that or not, whereas we naturally choose. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's embedded in us. I think that too. Like when I'm invested in a person in a relationship, I'm turned off by other men. Yes. Whereas men, they actively have to say, yeah. oop, I'm thinking about Julie or whoever her, whoever it is. You gotta calm it down. So it's like, oop, <laughs> nope, I'm actively turning around rather than naturally saying, oh, I'm not even looking at her. Like they're always looking. Yeah, because yeah, if a woman walked in here and mm -hmm. was like amazing, you would be saying to yourself, I'm loyal to my two wives. I don't see that. No, when women walk in, I put my head down. Out of respect for my women. <laughs> See? But but this, I still know there's beautiful women. We can I think we can acknowledge a man is handsome and a good catch. You know what we do? Refer him to a friend. If we love our friends, we'll be like, "Girl, I met a guy that would be great for you." You know, I think that's what. That's that's a little different, but oh man, just walking in, you just seeing him like, uh. I also that's think we're not, not as physical, happen. but right. sometimes. Yes, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. sometimes women yeah. do that. I, you, you may not know it, but women will definitely. I've definitely had um, women like text me while we're somewhere and be like, "Girl, he is fine." That like I've definitely had women do that. Mm. So I think we do see, you know. But my question to you is, what makes a man fine? I think it's um, well, the, if it's something you're attracted to, because I also think that as women, like. Women can be universally beautiful. I think for women, we are attracted to different kinds mm -hmm. of men. Yes. Like mm -hmm. we I, we might have a type. Like sometimes I don't like guys who are like really, you know, big and buff. I've mm -hmm. never really liked that. So mm -hmm. if somebody came in here like that, it wouldn't be my thing. But Gigi might like that. Mm -hmm. But Jordan might like that. And it's, it's her thing. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I just think it's a matter of what your type is like. And then I think that sometimes it's just like this attraction that you'll have to somebody that you can't explain. But listen, mm -hmm. but, this, but this is why women are failing. This is, what, this is why you guys are getting your hearts broken because you have a type and the type is the wrong type. If you're building off how tall he is, how big his, his muscles are, you're going to hurt yourself every time. But that's just a physical attraction. That doesn't mean but you want to- but, but that yeah. shouldn't be the base of it. You agree? Mm -hmm. 
You I agree? think that you can see somebody and be like, that person's attractive. But that, but yeah. then they can do something that makes them unattractive. unattractive. But Absolutely. if you're just talking about a physical aspect of what you like, that mm-hmm. doesn't mean I want to be with you. Okay. That just could be like, oh, I that's like the, the type of, attractive. yeah. Okay. And you, yeah. a lot of times, don't end up with a person mm-hmm. that looks like somebody that you would like. Some people are like, I know women who are like, I like big guys, like chubby guys. Right, right, and right. that's just what their type is. Right, that doesn't right. mean that's who they'll be with. Definitely. And there's people that are handsome that you're like, he talked and I can't stand right. him now. Right. Like, Absolutely. He's, sure. Yeah, For so sure. I, I think that, you know, it can vary. But I feel like men are a lot more physical. Like, that's why you guys can... Immature men. Yeah, yeah. Immature men. Because mm-hmm. if, if men is just looking at the body and that's it, he, he ain't going too far. But look, both of your wives are beautiful. And right. if they were not attractive... I was blessed with that, though. But I didn't marry them for looks. Like I, didn't I know you didn't marry but, you know, there's... Like, I think attraction is a real thing. If it was somebody that was completely, like... Horrible looking. Yeah. You may not be like, I'm marrying her because I'm attracted to her, you know, mind Mm. and her business. I think it all has to come together. Full package. Right. Nah, but not, 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 not with me because marriage is business to me. Like marriage is business. So this woman can walk in here 400 pounds. But she knows how to run, a, run a, 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 whole, a oil a oil company. <laughs> she, she's fluent in um, Arabic. You know, she's fluent in Mandarin. Like that's yeah. Come on, we can work that weight up off you. <laughs> Well, that's right. Or you can accept it for how she is too. But health is important to you too. Oh, cool. oh, so man. let's talk about your journey when it comes to not just physical health, mental health as well. Mm-hmm. Right. So let's talk about where you were and where you are now. Right. I was in a I was in a very dark place. You know, I grew up with not really being loved. So I had to teach myself how to love and accept love. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a very hard struggle um, to me. Because uh, in my home, I never heard the words, I love you. Like, mm-hmm. I've never heard my mom say, I love you, or I'm proud of you, or you're doing a great job. Um, and the only people I ever heard say they love me was the dudes in the streets, my brothers in the streets. I never heard no one else say it. So, you know, I had to teach myself how to love a woman. I had to teach myself how to be patient with a woman. I had to teach myself how to be understanding. And then I had to teach myself when a woman tells me she loves me to believe it mm-hmm. rather than uh, she's trying to run a game on me or, you know, that. So I was in a very dark place because I didn't never know how to love myself because my mother, she's my first teacher. Right. She didn't teach me how to love myself. But she probably felt like she was showing you because she was doing everything to make sure there was food on the table. Yeah, of take course. Care of Her, you, guys, you know, my was... mother's my mother's love language was providing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm a, I'm gonna make sure you got clothes on your back, a haircut, shoes on your feet, that a roof over your head. That that was her love language. But for a child, we don't know about providing. We right. don't we don't know about a roof over your head. I just want to be loved and hugged, you know. And I I didn't get that. So I grew up in a very very dark place, you know, to the point I got sick, I got overweight, you know, I had diabetes, cancer. I was going through it. Like I was going through it. And so then you also um, are into the wellness space. Yes. So I want to discuss how you managed to pull through it, like you said, because you were diabetic, overweight, dealing with depression, yeah. all of those things. So what pulled you out of that? And what did you discover about uh, nutrition? I went, so I traveled to um, Ecuador, mm-hmm. this this village in Ecuador. And this guy, is, he's from Spain. And he took me to the Amazon jungles. And these guys are all into all natural stuff. I'm looking at people 50, 60, 70, looking like they're 19, 20, mm-hmm. 22. And they're talking about, we don't get sick. You don't, what do you mean you don't get sick? No, everybody gets sick. Mm-hmm. Because I thought sickness was normal. I thought we we're supposed to get sick. Mm-hmm. Then they say, no, the food yeah. that you guys eat mm-hmm. is causing your sickness. Yes, it is. I said, nah, man. They said, stop this, do this. Stop this, do this. Fast. Fast? What's fasting? Mm-hmm. Don't eat no food. Don't eat no food. <laughs> what you want me to do? Just drink water? Drink water. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A nice butter fast. Man, my whole life, my whole my whole life changed. Everything went away. They they started giving me herbs and telling me about herbs, and I'm going back and forth to the Amazon. Now I'm sponsoring them because they don't have no electricity, so I'm buying the cords for electricity, and they're just teaching me every single thing on how to heal different diseases. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was crazy because we know we come over here, we know it's medicine, medicine, medicine. Right. Over there's like plants, plants, yes. plants. Yeah. Yep. 
you know, for me, I definitely, because I own a juice bar too. Mm. But, um, and I've done water fast before too. Mm. And I also know about how like fasting like that can help rebuild your organs, give right. you more strength. Right. Certain things I don't eat at all. Like I don't eat any cold cuts. Mm. I try not to eat like, I don't eat like um, nothing processed, hot no dogs, fast yeah, food. processed foods. And if you can just high do fruit like fruits and raw vegetables mm-hmm. and fruits yeah. and all mm-hmm. of that. Now, of course, I don't eat perfect at all. Right. Period. I'm having a drink right now. But um, I just try to make sure I do things in moderation. Right. When, I want to do it, you know. Right. Jordan, you like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, you know, I've done fasts. Mm-hmm. I've right. done water fasts. I've done cleanses. Mm. It's hard for me, especially I DJ. So okay. I'm outside. outside yeah. right. And it's hard to fight the temptation of a little beverage, <laughs> a little champagne, a little something, something every now and then. And right. then you want a late night snack. <laughs> Usually it's a baked potato for me. So right. it's hard. Um, it's a process. To get there. It's a process. It is. But once you really get in the groove of it, it becomes easier. Yeah. Like for me personally, this week I'm celebrating three years since I've been drunk. I have had mm. alcohol. I will have a glass of red wine. Mm. But I'm like 90% alcohol free for these entire three okay. years. Mm. And in the beginning during this time, I was still bartending. So I'm behind the bar and people mm. are offering me drinks. And I really stood firm on no alcohol at all for a whole two years. As far as food is concerned, uh, my mother was also a herbalist. Okay. So okay. Um, I was raised on, mm-hmm. we did not have fast food. I didn't have fast food until I was old enough to get it myself. Okay. Um, we Our candy was dried fruits mm. and, and, and chocolate covered raisins mm. and yogurt covered pretzels mm. and um, we ate a lot of trail mix and everything was always fresh, never frozen. Um, she cooked every meal. I can only remember going to a restaurant in my childhood one time. Mm. And my fourth grade, my graduation from private school, we went to TGI Fridays. Ooh. That's the only experience I have that I can remember as a child being in a restaurant. That's why you so, cook all the time now. Mm-hmm, yeah, and I'm the same way. I cook <laughs> yeah. a lot. Um, it's been almost 20 years since I've had, um, since I've eaten fast food on a regular basis. I did have the Popeye's chicken sandwich because I just had to see the <laughs> right. That marketing was amazing. I had to see why they was killing people over this sandwich. Yeah, that marketing was- <laughs> um, I did have the, but I will not. And, and I get asked, so when I tell people that I don't um, eat fast food and since I travel so much, right. I always get asked, well, what do you do in the clutch? What do you do when you're traveling and there's nothing else around? And I'm like, I, I go to my favorite gas station snacks, which is trail mix, mm. cheese, which I know cheese ain't all that great, right, but right, trail mix, cheese, whatever Trail mix probably ain't that good find. for you either, right. by the way. Um, you know, <laughs> no. I, I go with like peanut butter crackers and like things like that. Just to give me something to have on my stomach until I can get to a healthy meal, a solid, or you know whatever I can have. So, um, and I do see the difference in myself. Mm-hmm. You know, I just turned forty five, mm. and I sit next to my twenty seven year old daughter, and people don't believe that we are mother and daughter, mm. and that's because you know I still maintain my youthfulness, that's and beautiful. I'm active. I walk a lot. I don't really work out, but yeah. I used to dance, so okay. I kind of have all of that built up in. Mm. And yeah, like health is wealth, of and um, I just really wish that more people would understand that the food is killing us. Mm-hmm. You know, sure. they put all of these preservatives and all of this processed, you know, stuff in our food that's making us sick. So in return. We can go to these doctors. They would literally be like, "This causes cool. cancer," mm-hmm. but still advertise it and, and give sell it to it. us. Right. Right. Yeah, it's right. crazy. Right. It's it's insane the way that in the United States, and I travel a lot abroad. So when you go to other countries and these smaller islands, and everything is fresh, and mm. you can see and taste and feel mm. the difference when you spend course, time in other course, places and eat that food. I just wish that America would really do the right thing, <laughs> and and more people would be um, open to learning yeah. how yeah. to take care. It's of a business here, though, and that's and to heal themselves with food and fruits and vegetables because. Herbs really are medicine. Of course. Yeah. Of course. You know what I was raised on? What my mother gave us for everything? Golden seal. Golden seal. Golden seal. My mother gave us. I'm talking about you got a headache? Drink some golden seal. <laughs> Your stomach hurt? Drink some golden seal. Put a little oh, ginger in it. <laughs> now, ginger, I love. I, love. I put right. ginger, some fresh ginger, some ginger, ginger and everything. Mm, definitely, Turmeric. Definitely. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yes. And during COVID, um, a lot of people did get on a wave of being healthier yes. and building the immune system and the sea moss and all of that. So right. that mm-hmm. did kind of help people kind of awaken themselves to being right. a little bit more healthy. But they can't shake them, shake, shack, shake, or shackles. Mm-hmm. They can't right. get out that Chick Fil A line, you know. Right. Right. And it's because of all of the, the preservatives like, and the stuff that they pumping like, into it. They get you <laughs> addicted it's to it. Yeah, it's a fact. Well, aside from this, before you got here, we were talking to Jordan about. Um, you know, I don't, are you ready to settle down, Jordan? Like, no. Are you, no. Oh, I know I, that's right, right Jordan. Now, 
I would like to do a year. I was celibate for two years. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm coming out of my celibacy. Mm. I kind of want to have a phase where I have three hoes. <laughs> three hoes. Come on, rotation. <laughs> yeah, just to like live that life for a little bit, like a solid <laughs> roster, just because I've never done that. I've been now, when very... you say coming out of your celibacy, are you out of it already? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, you know, then I got ghosted, so that's a whole other story. Mm. But I'm like, you know what? I want to have like a little Tuesday, a little Wednesday, a little Saturday. Right. Um, I rotation. Love that but she right. knows what she wants. Cute. So, what do you right. think about that? I say date them all <laughs> and, and let the richest but man where that are loves they? the most win. And so, what do I do? Like, I don't even know where to, A, I don't know where to find them. Mm. B, I don't know what to say. I'm so out of the game. It's so hard to tell if somebody has money too or not. You know, you, know what, you know what I'll tell you? Date them all, but keep your vagina to yourself. Okay. That's not what she wants. Yeah, but she wants no, 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 no. But listen, no, no. But listen, listen <laughs> to what I'm saying to you. Date them all, but keep your vagina to yourself because the one that's just playing with you, he's not gonna, he's not gonna last. He's gonna show because he's gonna move you on to the next one. Okay. Because you're pretty, so a lot of men will try to get you to sleep with you. So how long do I have to do that before <laughs> I can actually get, you know, just because clearly she wants some physical attention. Uh, just, now what if? Okay, so what if you would be like, you want to sleep with me? Fifty thousand dollars. Facts. Cause that's that's advice you would give, right? Hey, no, <laughs> yo, what's, wow. what, what would that conversation look, look like? Look, like, what would that conversation look like? Like look, he asked look, me to dinner look. and then it's, it's funny. It's funny. No, because I tell my sisters this: if if a dude wants to date you, fifty thousand, uh -huh. fifty thousand off. Like top. in cash or 50, no? If they can't 000. afford a payment plan, fifty thousand. <laughs> Okay, okay. And if, so, they don't, if, if they don't have it, you're dating in the wrong pool. So let's run a scenario, right? Let's get it. Let's say I'm at a bar. Okay. A man approaches me right. and he's like, you know, I'd like to take you out to dinner. Mm -hmm. What am I? I'm just like, okay, that's 50000 Of course. Just just like 50, that. See, I don't 000. know if this is going to work. Look, look, that's look, 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 listen, 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 listen. <laughs> in America, women have been programmed a certain way. In these other countries, it's the norm. Okay. It's normal. Here and then it's crazy because you have men that's willing to take care of you. Off so you got to go to like Sweden or the really, Netherlands. Where am I going? I was you got to go to Europe, Europe somewhere. But I also Damn. feel like men are terrified of being used. Also, you know who's because terrified of being used? The ones that ain't got it. There we go. But I listen. I'm that's not, the ones that's always saying. If a man, but listen, but if a man can go to a strip club and blow ten to twenty thousand in a few hours. And you about to sleep with him, cook for him, iron his clothes, maybe clean his house. That's not worthy of you getting paid. But most guys I know aren't going to spend ten and $20,000 in a strip club. Mm. And if he is, I don't know that I want to be with somebody. Because I would be like, what are you doing? I know, Gigi. I mean, I've, I've been there nice if that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there and it's happened. <laughs> but like, if I'm dating a guy and he spends 20000 in a strip club, I'm... I don't think I want that either. Like, I feel like that's not financial. 5,000, okay. Sorry, Gigi. I'm just being I honest. Mean, it's, I mean, I, listen, it's I'm 13, not I'm 13 years removed from the game. Yeah. So, right, right, you know, right, I don't right. I don't want to hate on the strippers and but, hate on y'all game. Right. But I'm just saying that I feel like for me, that's not like fiscally responsible. That's like- But, but what is it? My thing is- <laughs> when, Marketing. Uh, what, what's your off? value? What is, what is your <laughs> value? A, a heartache and some dingling? Like, what's the value? Mm -hmm. No, I think I- have a hard time because I feel like my standards are almost too high. What's your standard? No, your standards Which should never be too high. I don't. I just don't know where to find them. That's my thing. Like, where are they at? Because okay, I but, can activate all of this. Right, I just right. need to be in the right place. Right. Where Where are y'all at? You need to where go. Where are y'all at? You need to go where the grown <laughs> men play at. The grown The grown men are playing in places that these average men don't be at. Mm -hmm. So the is vacation? that like a hotel bar? No, like, no, 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 no. no. Where are they men, at? Men, men with money are. They're not in places where the mm -hmm. average guy is at. So F1 now, now, prefix. No, 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 no. Now, now you need to travel. We got a passport. Yeah. So we got, we got. So, so we got, so, so we got, we got to you start. You ain't find nobody there, girl. One. I love the yachts. <laughs> I love the yachts. I'm like, what is going on? This is the place to be. No, yeah. not a one. <laughs> Man, listen, listen. You, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you some things, right? And this is between us, right? All right. This is and just everybody between, listening. Right. Between us. This, this stays in this room. <laughs> right. Just in this room. Right. In these cameras. Right. If you truly want a man to provide your every need, and I'm not just talking about financially, I'm talking about mentally, physically, spiritually, Emotionally. love, everything that comes with you, you have to know your value because mm -hmm. a man will treat you as you come. Yeah. So if you're saying, oh, I don't have to do nothing for you and I can I can knock you down every night, 
that's exactly what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to get the chick that's playing hard to get, that's giving me a hard time and expecting all this. I'm wifing her, but I'm just knocking you down. I'm having fun with you. So yeah. if you really want a man to really change your world, you have to know what you deserve and mm-hmm. don't settle for nothing else. So no yes. three hoes. It's giving know your word they and add they, they taxes. Don't they don't all. They don't all. And then you're and and win. Because some people like would say, if you said 50000 that's like prostitution. You know, it's I'm just business, telling you, I just know what no, people who are watching this are going to say. But, but, but listen to it. A man will get you, will have sex with you. Sometimes the sex is horrible. Mm. We're mentally <laughs> abusive. We we don't know how to take care of you emotionally. We have no spiritual connection, so mm. we can't elevate you. Most of the time, they're stupid, so we can't feed your brain. What are you worth? And you just gave me six months of your life, a year of your life, mm. three years of your life. You can't even get that back. Right. And all you got, what, is heartache? Wait, did you used to be that guy? Hmm? Before you... <laughs> <laughs> You know what they I say. Love that if you're behind, you can hear. If you can, you can hear. Okay. Uh, 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 Come again. <laughs> Middle finger to my old guy. Okay. I'm not that guy no more. No, because I want to hear. Because the journey is important to me. Like we said, we talked about everything you went through physically to get yourself right. to where you are now. But let's talk about this sexually wise and being right. in a relationship right. wise. Did you right. used to be that guy that was be, wasting time? I was wasting time. Mm-hmm. I, I wasted so many women's time and. And you essentially wasted your own time. Facts, you know, and it's so sad that we go through good women to learn how to be good men. I'm going to repeat that. We go through good women. We hurt you. We scar you to learn how to be good Mm. men. And guess who's still walking around with the heartache and the pain? You are. Mm. So if this man's going to treat you as a test, you better come up. Mm -hmm. You better come up. Well, what about you getting hurt, though, by a woman? Because, I mean, that happens too, right? There's right. times that you might put your all into somebody. Right. What happens when it's the reverse? And now I done gave you $50,000 for five dates. And um, and now you done broke my heart because you had two other hoes. Right. But when, <laughs> when, but, no, that, that's, but that don't happen to good men. Not real good men. Real good men don't get played with. It's the boys that believe that they're the good men that be played with. Because if a man steps into a woman's life and he's elevating her on every single level and she can see her growth. When she looks in the mirror, she sees a whole different person. A woman's not going to mess with it. I don't care how crazy this woman is. It's not going to happen. Do you believe that? Some women ain't shit. I believe it. I also believe from, ex- from experience that I have... a uh, elevated in life with the help of a man and even he didn't see it Mm. Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) don't put me in this (laughs) you know we know i talk about the same person all the time i was i had somebody in my life for almost 15 years so and we've been through a lot Mm -hmm. and um you know the person that i was 15 years ago is not the same woman that i am right now but for some reason well we, i'm not gonna say right in this moment but for some reason there was a time when i was dealing with this man after all of these years had went by right. and he's his mind his mindset and his concept of thinking about me and dealing with me was the same woman that was that woman way back then and you helped me see my worth you helped me elevate and become a better woman and, and to better myself all the way around the board why don't you see it right mm. yeah and the world may never know mm. <laughs> Uh, when is the time to give up, too? You know, as we're talking about conversations now. like this. But, <laughs> Last you know, week, yeah. Before, before I mean, began. you know, you grew from yes. things that you've done in the past. For sure. And if somebody is holding you down, you know, when when is it time to tell a woman, sis, this is just not it? Like, it's not going to happen. If you've been through a lot, she's done things, he's done things. When is it time to say we can work on this? And when is it time to say enough is enough? Yeah. Like, what are those signs? When, like she just said, and, and, this, and this is perfect. If you're grown as a woman, but he's still trying to treat you like the first day he met you, it's over with. He doesn't realize who you are. Mm-hmm. If he can't see who you are, your growth, it's time to go. Especially when he had a hand in it. Fine. You helped me get here. How do you not see and, that? But that's I'm crazy. Here. A man that teach you, don't don't take this, don't take that, but they still try to dish it out to you. That part. Mm-hmm. Come on. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. You can't heal a person and hurt a person at the same time. Mm-hmm. You can't lead a person and drag a person back at the same time. It's impossible. I didn't know I was coming to church today. God. <laughs> <laughs> I told you these, these, these Monday I say, mantras. I say, I say. <laughs> 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 these. But, you know, sometimes I also believe that... Mm-hmm. Um, 
men have their trauma too that they dealt with. Like, right. look, you talk Facts. about. I know you recently, like, with your father, um, he wasn't around right. the way he could have been, and right. you did reconnect with him. I found him. Yeah, yeah, you found him, and guys do deal with some things that maybe they don't even realize That's at true. times. That's and true. so, how can you? help them also because mm-hmm. sometimes the way that they treat you is and it's an excuse sometimes but sometimes it's real right mm-hmm. like a reflection, you know a reflection, yeah because they don't know the way right right and right. so there is some grace right for yeah. that too a man that's striving to become better and accepts um where he came from and where he wants to go now a man that's using what he went through as a clutch as a crutch it's over with for him because he's always going to blame what he went through for why he is who he is. And he's yeah. never going to change. Yeah, at a certain point, because you know guys would be like, I'm a work in progress. No, like, I'm fighting my we demons. Get <laughs> We're still loading. Yeah. Um, so talk to me about reconnecting <laughs> with your father, too, yeah. and, and so, how um, that, like, that affected you. Yeah, so I called I call one of my partners. I said, um, I just gave him my name and address. Mm-hmm. And I remember I'm driving through Chicago at this time. I'm coming from Ohio. I'm driving through Chicago. And I said, man, here's a name, here's an address. Find this for me. He said, I found it. It was in Tennessee. He found the address. So I pull up to this man's house. I remember I'm hopping now. I'm fat. I'm fat. Drop top bins, long dreads. I'm knocking <laughs> on the door. He's like, yo, who are you? <laughs> wow. I'm like, yo, I'm, a, I'm your son. And he just he gave me a hug. And I spent the night over there for like maybe three days. And, and I left. Now I take care of my father. You know, I'm teaching my father how to be a man. And what wow. did he say? Like, what conversation did you guys have? About- I asked myself. How long ago was this? I said, a while ago. Okay. Yeah, and I asked him, saying, why'd you leave me? Like, why'd you leave your baby boy? He said, drugs, son. He said, and this is like the crack era. Mm-hmm. He's like, I met a woman, I, your mom, this. You know, he spoke highly of my mother, but he, he said, I left for work, to work somewhere else, and I met this woman, and she got me hooked on crack, and I was on crack your whole life until two weeks before I knocked on his door. Wow. Oh. Damn, so you just came at the... <sighs> Crazy, time, time. crazy. So is he also the father to your brothers or? No, 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 just me. Just um, but now I take care of him. You know, I, I provide for him and I'm showing him how to be a man. I'm showing him how to be a father to me loving my own children. That's blessing. Yeah. Okay. It was you, hard though. So how did like not having connected with your father before that, how did that affect how you treated women? Or do you think you I never, I never, I never seen, I never seen a woman loved. I never seen a man love a woman, ever. Even when your mom got remarried, I've never, I never. My mother married a weak, pretty boy. He was just six four, green eyes, light skin, just pretty, mm-hmm. but weak. You know, I don't consider him a man. I consider him a, a, a man and a, a boy in a man's body. He wasn't a man. He was cheap too, very cheap. <laughs> But like, well, really why do you cheap. say he was weak? Like, what de- define what that is? Every time they got through it, he ran to his mother. Mm-hmm. Every time they had disagreements, he would run to his mother and put his mother in, in my mother's way. business, you know. Or if we're going to school and it's time to get school closed, and he'll give my mom $100 for me and my brother. What's, what's $100 going for? You can't even get shoes, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but, yeah, my, my, father, my father was hooked on drugs and... It, it scarred me for a very long time because at one point I wanted to kill him. I said, if I ever find this man, I'm going to kill him because I seen what my mother went through. Mm-hmm. And to be honest with you, that day I was going there, I was going to kill him. Oh, well, damn. And it's the truth. I was going to kill him. That's why I got his edge. I was going to kill him. But when he said, son, I turned into a little boy all over again. Wow. And I told him, him, I brought him and my mom together. Oh, wow. Together, after 30 plus years, right, of not seeing each other, I put them in one space. I'm detoxing them. And I set him in front of my mother. I said, I was going to kill you. He said, son, I felt it coming. I felt that you was going to do something to me. Mm. Yeah. You know, and this is interesting to talk about because when you think about, like, your father, like, Jordan, I don't know what your relationship is, but, like, how do you think that plays a role? With my dad? Mm -hmm. Oh, my dad's my best friend. Okay. Um, I lost my mom when I was 17, Mm -hmm. so it's just really been us. Um, We have a very interesting dynamic, probably a lot more open-minded than most father-daughter relationships, Mm -hmm. but I think that's what's made me so communicative and open and honest about who I am Mm -hmm. whenever, wherever. Mm -hmm. Um, He also had a really good relationship with both of his parents Mm -hmm. and especially his mother, so I think we come from a fairly healthy line of right. open communication in a different way that I don't see in a lot of parent-child mm-hmm. relationships. Mm-hmm. Um, 
However, <laughs> him and my mom, they were married till she passed. Mm-hmm. Um, they had some complications. And mm-hmm. I think something common that I see that I think my dad is a little falls victim to himself is like these men want to be bad bitches like they want to be coddled and they want to be chased and they want mothers and i'm not raising nobody's son so that's kind of where the the downside of that relationship is of having that healthy nurturing relationship it's like oh you want to marry your mom i'm not your mom yeah Uh, and you know you're the you're the type of person you take care of your women right like a question right Everything, massage their feet, do everything. Every, everything, um, nannies, maids, whatever. I want my woman soft. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't. I don't want her upset. I don't want her looking tired. You know, anything they need that I can provide to make their lives easier, I'm going to provide it because I take being a provider seriously. I see what it does to a woman when she doesn't have that. Right. You know, and it's it interesting. It makes the woman hard. Very. <laughs> it makes very, them very strong. Very. And, you know, we pride ourselves on being strong. Right. But it brings a, a part of masculinity that you, we really don't need, that we take on. Right. That and then when not you, natural then for Then us. when you meet right. a man that's trying to, to be a man, it's kind of hard for it's you hard to accept for you to it accept because you've been hard for so yes. long. Yes. But I also feel that, because uh, I've been very independent as far as like, Taking care, I I believe that I should be able to take care of myself, but mm. it's great for me when I can find somebody who can take some of that off of me. But I feel comfortable knowing that I that you got it, yeah, yeah. that I'm good. But it's like, a be- it was a better feeling knowing that if you weren't good, your man got your back. Yeah, but I never want to not be good. Like I I want to feel no, like I, it, I can yeah. appreciate what you bring to the table and what you do for me, and it's amazing. But I also take great comfort because I think sometimes, like Gigi was saying to her point earlier, feeling like this could all be taken away, right? Mm-hmm. So it's nice to know, like, to come together as two whole individuals mm-hmm. where neither one of us are necessarily reliant on each other. But mm-hmm. it's great that we can be. But, but see, we but, don't have to. But the be. thing is, the weak men have messed it up. Mm-hmm. For men that really want to provide and lead and guide a woman. Because like she said, you got men that are dangle all this. And then as soon as you don't do what they want, they pull mm-hmm. it back. And then you have men like me that want to say, Yo, I want you good with me or without me. I want you good. Now it's kind of hard for me to convince you to allow me to properly take care of you. What do you think about mm-hmm. prenups? Prenups? What do you mean? Like a prenup before you get, if you're getting married. No. No, no if, prenup. If, if I'm setting you up, if I'm if I'm setting you up properly, we're not going to have no problem. The problem is most men don't know how to lead. They're coming into these relationships without knowing how to be providers mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. Because money is just an add-on. Money money's the bonus. But if I can't lead you emotionally or mentally, come on. Now, now you need a prenup. You Now I need a prenup. Mm-hmm. But if I know who I am, I know who I chose. Because I trust me. I trust me completely. I know who I chose. I'm going to set you all the way up. You're up. I'm changing your life overnight. It's no waiting. No waiting. I'm not going to date you for three, four, five months. <laughs> it's no. My wife in Africa met her one day, spoke to her on the phone before I even seen her. Love the conversation about business. Yo, let me talk to your parents. Let me marry you. My first wife here in America went to her father. Hey, I'm going to change your daughter's life. She'll never need you again for anything but to be a father. And how long, too, before you did that? What do you mean? A week? I'm not playing no games. If, if I'm coming <laughs> into your home. Y'all was crazy for accepting that man's proposal after three days. Oh. Okay, but Gigi, here we are. <laughs> y'all did not get married. We did declare. not get married. Maybe you were. We were engaged for 65 days. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized that this was Gigi not. Gigi came in a week after me, well, reconnecting with this guy. Right. Like, I'm engaged, y'all. I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. But it, hey, if you like it, I love it. But one thing, when, I liked it for two months. Right, right. But when a real man wants you, he don't let you know. He ain't playing no game. He don't want you to. He he doesn't want you on the market. It's over with. It's you're my responsibility. I love you. Can you hold me down? Can you nurture me? What I provide? Can you nurture what I provide? Mm-hmm. Not me as a man, because I don't need you to be my mother. I'm not choosing to sleep with my mother. I'm not a needy boy. I'm completely healed as a man. Can you nurture this business? Can you nurture these thoughts? Can you nurture this spiritually? And she said, Yeah, I'm gonna change your whole. I'm a changing your whole world. You're mine. Are you teaching this? <laughs> oh, he does have a course because we need more men like right. you out here. I don't know, a week though. A week. Gigi we need loves more, this though. We Gigi need loves more men like you out here. You were speaking my but, language. But when a man knows himself though, when a man knows Where himself. Where is the class? 
Come where on. are your uh, you know, where, people, where, where are your students? Ads? Where are your students? Cause because people will also <laughs> tell you that it takes a while to get to know a person's true self and not their representative. That's another conversation, you know, that's being had all the time. But when you know yourself, mm-hmm. see, the problem with a lot of people don't know themselves, so they're attracting they're attracting certain parts of them that they truly don't like. I know me. I know me. I know I'm the leader. I know if we go bad, I'm responsible because I brought you into my life. I'm not blaming you for nothing. I'm going to pay for you. I pay for you to come in. I'm going to pay for you to go out. <laughs> Do they get raises? <laughs> like, what you mean? like, I need okay, more money. So, <laughs> like, so my wife, my, my wives, every time they give birth, every time they give birth, I pay them $150,000. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask because my friend, friend and her it's husband like a, more like that. Bonus. What, yeah, a, so what, a, what, what, what a push present that is. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is like, I mean, listen, I already know there's going to be all kinds of conversations in the mm-hmm. comments. <laughs> because like I told you earlier, you know, because I've I followed your page. Yes. And I see people will be like, Oh, yeah. he's, yeah. They right. don't believe it. They put the little cap um, emoji. Because right. <laughs> they don't believe they're worth that's, receiving that's, that's that type it. of that's life what is, what I'm, is what I'm hearing. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm going to let y'all know I'm going to Capitol Grill after this. Um, somebody's going to hit on me and be like $50,000. You know? I you. would love to do this experiment. <laughs> and see we need to have a candy can. Look, we need to make it an experiment, Jordan. Okay, let's do it. I'm ready. Because there's going to be some pushback. Because some guys, I already know, they're going to say, especially if they just met you, Mm. And you're, you're not like, for me. Yeah. Not even like a date first. Because be he's like, coming, see how, he's coming into your life like. to play with you. When a man, a man know what they want. I'm not coming to play. I want you. I'm gonna take care of you. You mine. But you know that instantly because you just told me earlier. You know, we talked about physical attraction. Right. How do you even know? Because that has to be a physical attraction. If you approach I know somebody, me. right? I know me. I'm not dating for a look. I'm dating for a mental, a mind state. I'm not dating for a look. But what I'm saying is if you, appro- like somebody approaches Jordan right. at Capitol Grill today, right? right? When they approach her. <laughs> when they approach go. her, because they will. <laughs> but they don't know her at all. Like right. they just know what she looks like. They don't right. know anything about her. Mm-hmm. So you can't just be like $50,000. They don't even know that they would See, but, want you but like there, that. But there are men. Just I'm from te- looking I'm, at I'm you. I'm telling you, I'm telling there are men that will approach a woman and say, I want to change your life. But how do they know? They don't know anything about you. Like, how do they, they don't know have that? To they know because themselves. They know themselves. But I'm saying. I feel the same way about that situation I was in when this guy said, <laughs> after day three, I want you to be my then, wife. No, but that's after day three. But listen, then a, lot, a lot of women are dealing with athletes and rappers and their money's not really that long. Y'all got to get around some real bosses. <laughs> real bosses. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just I'm just being Take honest. Sip. But well, I feel like when you do approach someone, right? It's like, okay, do I look clean? Is my, you know, that there are certain things that we can tell about people off the rip that are aligned with what we're looking for. Mm -hmm. But I also feel like that's still physical. You don't know anything about somebody's mental just approaching them at all. Like, how can you? But if you look a mess, I'm going to be like, you're mentally unstable. Yeah. (laughs) But you should also be mentally unstable and be well put together. True. Facts. That's you a know, fact. that's a fact. Or you know, it's just energy, having an off it's an essence, or you yes. could be having an off day. Energy, it's all that fruit and, and plants. Like you just and, know, and, like and, when you know, you know, right? When I'm you know yourself, you. you know. And when you know yourself, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, he proposed after three days, but thirty minutes into our first date, he asked me to commit to him. Mm-hmm. So, and I said yes. Gigi, I, this would be great if it worked out. <laughs> Cause I, it did not work out, but guess what? I was the one who called it off. Yeah, it wasn't Listen, like he did all that and was then dropped me. Right. Like once I realized well, no, that I it wasn't going to work for me, I was the one who said, "Okay, I'm cool." Like, right, but right, but I right. also feel like because again, I wish you nothing but the best. Yeah, wish, and you still it's do. actually it's our best. anniversary coming up. <laughs> oh my, girl, if you don't stop, <laughs> it's your anniversary. <laughs> okay, all right. So let's say initially. Right. After that week when you were like, okay, I already know what I wanted, what it right. is. So had you guys already had sex and did that? No, I'm talking to parents. Like I want, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm locking you in. I'm, so this I'm, is all before I'm, that. I'm talking to your before parents. It's over with. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm talking to the father. I'm pulling to the side. Look, I'm going to take care of your daughter. Both fathers know about each other. Both of my wife, they know about each other. Like nothing in my life is a secret. Mm-hmm. And the father said, as long as my daughter is happy, I'm happy for, and I see that you're doing an amazing job. Would your father say that, Jordan? If no, no. <laughs> <laughs> he might. You know, I've done some wild things. You know, <laughs> I've, I've done some wild things. My father came to my Playmate of the Year shoot. You know what I'm saying, and things like that. So he might. He's like usually he'll be like, "You're grown, right? And okay. as long as you're good, and as long as you're safe, you'll yeah. be okay." Right. 
he might say some things behind my back that I don't know, but the family be like, right. There she go again. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, what do you say to men who are listening uh, to this right now? And mm. they're like, I want to be able to find a woman that can match me, but it's a hard thing to do. What do you mean by match me? Like just match what it is that he wants compliment who he is because you know let's be real for women it's hard for us to find a man for a man for a man it's hard to find the right woman too. but it's not not for a man mm-hmm. a lot of these boys are, are stuck in men bodies but a real man can lead a woman to greatness it's my job to lead you but what should they be looking for if they're like okay what are some of the signs a, that wo- a is- woman that's open-minded if you're willing to be led you can be led that's it Mm-hmm. And he has to make sure that he's a man. Majority of men that you see being. aren't men. They're not men. They sound like men. They look like men. They're not men. And that's why so many women are hurt. <laughs> men get hurt too nowadays, I feel like. I feel like men they- hurt themselves. <laughs> Ooh, I was about if to say you, that. If you're if a man <laughs> only themselves. these boys only want to be leaders when it's convenient. <laughs> if I'm the leader and I chose you, how can you hurt me? I brought you into my world. How can you hurt me? Mm-hmm. I hurt me. Lead by example mm. or something. I and I do want, since Gigi brought up the course earlier, can you talk about that? Because you also do help couples, right? Yes. No, I just I just created it. It's called the Millionaire's Love Course, right? Mm-hmm. And this doesn't just teach couples about how to become better as one, but singles, how to find what you're looking for. Okay, there you go, you know, Jordan. How to get your money all the way right. Okay. And just and just falling deeper in love with yourself. And they can they can go to that. Let me shout this out, the yachters.com. Because mm-hmm. this was created with my first wife. We both sat down and we created, and she's a multi-millionaire. Mm-hmm. You know, she wasn't a multi-millionaire when I met her. And she had a baby when I met her. She so she came in with a three-year-old. Okay. And I and I, I wife both of them. I, I take care of the daughter. I love her like she's my own child, even though she still has her father in her life. Mm-hmm. This is what real men do. But um it's called the yadas.com, T H E Y A D A S dot com. Go there and, and get your life right. Mm. Takes notes. Do you do custom mantras? <laughs> I, I need custom like, mantra in the mirror, like while I'm walking down the street. In my <laughs> she can ear. play this while she's DJing, right? Like, <laughs> like underneath, <laughs> subliminally. Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> the greatest thing I tell people all the time is just, just fall in love with yourself. You know, sometimes we're afraid to be alone, but we need to. We need to fall so deep in love with ourselves that nothing else matters. And I promise you, you're gonna attract what you want when you love you and don't settle for nothing. Have your fun. Date them all. Have your three hoes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Date them all. But but don't but don't don't settle for anything. Don't sacrifice your happiness for no man. They, they're not worthy of that. You are the portals of life. You give birth. You deserve greatness. Now let me ask you this. Um, since your first wife already had a three year old, yes. how did you get along with her child's father? He hates me. <laughs> Wow. Because, not, because, to this day? Because I introduced his daughter into something that he didn't. That he, didn't. Couldn't. he didn't. He couldn't. And and she loves me as her own father and he hates that. Mm-hmm. You know, and I uplifted a woman that he couldn't. He hates that. You know, I took a woman, oh, she ain't all that. And he yes, sees he the is. greatness in her. You know, when you pull up in a foreign on a nigga still driving his mama car, it's a difference. Yikes. Wow. He hates you even more. Now. Come on, <laughs> hates me. Oh my gosh! You think there's ever a time that you guys will be able to like? I pull him to the side. Like, you know, I, I'm a real man. I pull him to the side. I say, look, she loves both of us. You know, I can even help you get yourself together. But his ego, a man's oh, yeah, ego, and pride is downfall. It's a downfall. Together. It's a downfall. Wow. Can you imagine? Yeah. But maybe you know, <laughs> no, I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> I can help you get yourself together. You probably would better <laughs> to fight you. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wow. Well, listen, I really appreciate you for coming through because yeah, I know I being here. this is a journey and I cannot wait to hear what people have to say yeah. <laughs> after they hear this I, episode. I don't, but... I don't read the comments, but I think I might have to dive Absolutely. into these. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, doing I'm, I'm doing a follow up. <laughs> yeah. But this is always I'm interesting to me also because a lot of things that I know people will push back on. I wanted right. to make sure we bring that up yes. so you can respond to that before it actually you know, comes right. out because I want to hear what people have to say. Right. You we know. have a social experiment that we need to figure Absolutely. out. Absolutely. What do you think about not process. getting married? Like a lot I'm of people are like, like I could be okay. with somebody and not be married. I don't know. I, I think I believe that a man should be committed to a woman, a woman be committed to a man. You're my responsibility. And why, can you be committed not? without marriage? It depends on the person. Some people can, but you should reap some benefits. I, I'm saying if you're going to, as a woman, I'm, talking, I'm speaking from a woman's perspective. Mm-hmm. If you're going to dedicate yourself to a man, laying with this man, the sex is not good, he, 
you're trying to raise them because a lot of men are broken, literally broken. So you have to literally play mama some of the times and a therapist some of the times. As long as you're reaping some type of benefit that suits you. Some women don't want money. Someone might just buy me a house and rent it out and let me make money from that. Mm -hmm. But I believe a woman should be, if you're going to play wife to a man, play the role of a wife. Make sure he puts you in a house to make sure you, you can handle your responsibilities. Because your second wife, you guys, can you be legally married? I know she's not in this. In two country. different countries, depends if, if, if on the countries itself, you mm -hmm. know, because he's not tied. Um, but okay. Now, I'm just wondering about that because I feel like nowadays for some people, they're like, we can just be together. We don't have to be married. Like we can be committed to each other. You know, marriage for a lot of people. They it's, don't scary. Want it. it's, it's scary. It's scary. It's scary because they only, they only seen the bad business. side from mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Marriage is a scary thing. So many people get divorced or do not like their husband or wife. Women women are leading in divorce rates. Like they're divorcing men at high numbers because men aren't men anymore. Mm. They're not men. They don't know how to lead. They don't know how to protect. And when I say protect, I'm not even talking about physically. I'm talking about emotionally. Most men do not know how to protect a woman emotionally. You'll start crying. He'll blame you for crying. Why are you crying? What you doing? Like, come on, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm soft. I'm a woman. Love that woman. I'm emotional. Come on, take care of her. How do you feel when a man cries in front of you? Um, Depending on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I had a, a man cry during sex. Okay. Oh, and I've been around a man when he lost the you know a family member and mm. and, and cried. So right. it right. depends on like what's mm -hmm. the reason. I also had a man who cried when I tried to break up with him, but <laughs> <laughs> but then he tried to kill me. So Ooh. oh my god, she's seen it all basically. Yeah. You said what? She's seen it all. Yeah, he boohoo cried and then kicked the air conditioning unit in my window and woke me up with a knife to my throat. What? <laughs> man, oh, that was Gosh. the first one. GG. Man, the first one. The second one is the one who may he rest in peace. Mm. So. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, on oh, that bless. note. <laughs> <laughs> oh my girl. Um, uh, Yada, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you to OG Juan, I'm who's in the building too, Big making Juan, sure that this happens. Street Lord Juan. <laughs> that's our that's our guy right here, Street Lord Juan. Everybody in Detroit knows him. So even before he came out here, everybody's like, you gotta make sure that you, you know, talk to Juan. I remember sure. when you came home from from jail, you know, and what a big deal it was for everybody definitely, in the city. Definitely. Is that where you're originally from? No. Nah, where are you originally from? California. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do you, did you live in Detroit? A little no? bit. A little bit. Because <laughs> I've I've noticed from experience that Detroit men are a lot like what you're what you're getting. Is that true? Yeah. They Detroit men know they how provide. to take care of the man. They provide without I mean, questions. Detroit men are men and they know how to take care of their woman. Right. For sure. Without a question. Mm -hmm. In my in my experience, in my personal experience. Without a question. It's always them Detroit ones. Detroit is a look at that's where I need to like, go. That's me. <laughs> Let's take a trip. Let's go. Yeah. Actually, Let's do our, our social, social experiment, experiment in Detroit. <laughs> um, okay, y'all. So we do have a party in Detroit. Yep. Coming up July 20th. See? Okay. Yes. So come with, because yes. um, it's going to be at the rooftop at Cambria. I'm also hosting like a concert, a nice R&B night. We're going to stay for a couple days. Mm. And mm -hmm. it is, a, it, we're going to have a good time. Okay. So yeah. part two, down, we're going to figure it out. Way. Shout yeah. out to everybody in the D, baby. Mm. All right. Well, um, thank you so much again for coming through. It. And we appreciate um, you. We're going to do this experiment for real. No, for real. No. You know, I, I mean, you know, I got my man, so I'm... I'm not. I'm gonna just watch y'all. You're just gonna observe. <laughs> I'm just okay. gonna observe. I got nothing to do with We're it. We're actively but I, players in this. Yes. But yes, yes. You're gonna All take right. the notes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's lip service. <laughs>